It is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, September the 3rd, 2022, just outside of uh, sunny Philadelphia. And we got some more Australian boxing to talk to you about. So this uh, episode here is going to be a YouTube available and uh, Fight View 360 boxing podcast episode um, of Australian boxing. So it's not going to be as long as our um, other episodes. So you can consider that it's going to be a lot of updates. But the main topic of this video is going to be Miris Breedis, who has just been announced that he's going to take on Australian boxing prospect fringe contender in Justice Hooney. I'm T Street Controversy with Fight View 360, along with my colleague Big J. And we're going to jump right into things. But before we talk about um, the big fight, which is the topic of the video, Miris Breedis, who lost to uh, Jai uh, Opataya back in, that was July, right, Big J? 2nd of July, that's correct. 2nd of July, um, and it's September right now. Miris Breedis um, lost his IBF title in arguably, you know, the biggest upset of the year. And now he is now moving to heavyweight, a uh, move that he's been flirting with for the last uh, five, six years or so. But um, about two years ago, he did announce that he was going to be moving to heavyweight. But now, you know, but he did decide decide to stay at cruiserweight. But now he's officially at heavyweight um, to take on Justice Hooney. And but first, before we, we let's back up before we get to all of that, let's talk about some Australian boxing. So it was a fight night in uh, Australia. Tell me about the girl who fought tonight, uh, Beck Hawker or Rebecca Hawker, Hawker, who's on the screen right now. She is now six and zero with two KOs, thirty one years old. Um, from uh, Brisbane, Queensland, she fought a Holly Tao. So wh what's the deal behind her? Uh, break it down for me, because um, if it wasn't for you, I would have never heard of her. But is she making waves? Oh, yeah, she's just won the WIBA Featherweight Championship. Now, it's a minor title, but mm -hmm. she does join the ranks of several Aussie female fighters who have won titles in different divisions. Uh, Susie Ramadan and Superfly... Shannon O'Connell and Shanika Johnson and Super Benham. I'm pretty sure Diana Prozac won one at Super Feather off the mm -hmm. top of my head. Erin McGowan won one, I think, at Lightweight. So she's, she's, you know, that's pretty much the cream of the crop of Australian female boxing. Uh, and these minor titles are a step up, you know, to hopefully where she'll get a shot at one of the major ones. Okay, so, 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 so to put it into um, uh, context... Um, Amanda Serrano has held the title that she's won tonight, meaning Beck Hawker. Amanda Serrano is going to be fighting on September the 24th. If you don't know, Amanda Serrano had that um, arguably the biggest, um, um, the financially biggest fight in women's boxing history when she fought Katie, Katie Taylor a few months ago. And a woman by the name of Jelena uh, Mer Merjanovic. She also held the title, and she's fighting tonight on the uh, Juan Francisco Estrada card. So basically, you know, the title that she's won, and even um, um, the sister of Amanda Serrano, Cindy Serrano, has held this title. So it's a, you know, it's but the, re regarding championship fights or championship titles, this can be considered um, one of the ways to a major title. So it has some significance to it. So I, I wouldn't have known this if Big J wouldn't have brought it up. And as I'm sitting here looking at the box record, I'm like, oh, okay, this is one of those titles. So, you know, it's W-I-B-A uh, title. Um, she fought a woman by the name of um, uh, Holly Tabo. And you were saying, like, and I'm looking at her picture, she looks really young. You know, it was her debut. She's only 15 <laughs> years old. Uh, it wasn't her debut, it was her eighth professional fight. She was actually the defending champion, so box rec is, information is completely inaccurate. Got you. Uh, yeah, so she won that title when she was 17, would you believe? So she's been a bit pro for a year or so now, maybe a little bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. Got a fantastic um, amateur career, like world titles and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, but um, for someone who's so young at 18, um, yeah. She's got a long career ahead of her, so yeah. Um, but Beck did real well. I mean, it was a very, um, it was a washout. I mean, it was eight rounds to two. That's probably being generous. Nine rounds to one. Okay. And Beck just beat the daylights out of this poor girl. So, uh, but you know, I mean, so she's competing like at one twenty-six, um, by the way. But um, yeah, how do you yeah. look at her though? Like, is she? 
you know, one thing I've noticed and we talked about before is how um, would you consider this somewhat of the golden age of broadcasted, um, meaning they're on networks, Australian boxing fights, because you can see that someone like Beck Hawker, they're already broadcasting her and giving her TV time. So they're trying to build her up. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I remember seeing, I think I even sent it to you. I remember seeing uh, about a week or a couple of weeks ago, I saw mainstream media, Channel 7 actually had an interview with her in the ring on a I remember you morning TV video. show. Yeah, it's called Sunrise. I'm like, oh, okay, for a... Okay. Uh, right. Female boxing prospect. Oh, yeah, miss, you know how how it goes with a uh, uh, wrestling. You know they like they're giving her a push. Like she's getting the push. Yeah, she she's got the push. And like I know who Beck Hawker was because she's appeared on uh, a few undercards. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, they're giving her a thing for because I thought it was you know like an IBO title or something. Mm-hmm. And I found out it was a WIBO. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, actually, actually, like, what it, does she have a big time right, promoter okay. behind her? Because, um, basically, it's no disrespect to her, but I'm like, you know, like she's getting a push. So what's behind it? Mm. Like, is she like, this, uh, like, is, she, like is she good? You know, because I haven't, I haven't watched yes, it. Yes. Don't be surprised if she ends up with Eddie because Angelo DiCarlo is her promote. Ace Boxing is looking after her. Got so. It. Ace Boxing Group ran by Angelo DiCarlo. And we do know. Takes care of, you know, um, Liam, Jake Van G, Dempsey, all those, um, all those blokes. Um, so, and we do know. Me, I wouldn't be surprised if she ends up on an Eddie card at some point. And as to, put, to put things into um, some perspective, we do know that um, um, DiCarlo is working with Eddie Hearn um, and The Zone for the uh, uh, Liam Paro versus Brock Jarvis card. So that's why we're saying that. And he may be um, Eddie Hearn's link or his uh, wingman or the one who's helping Eddie Hearn get his uh, flag planted in Australia with the zone. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised in the near future if we see her start appearing on some zone cards. I wouldn't okay. be surprised. So, okay. Considering all the good things that Eddie's doing for women's boxing. Gotcha. Uh-huh. Okay, so um, overall, but you think she's got the goods from what you've seen to make it, you know, as far as Australian boxing. Oh shit! Yeah, I think she's doing. She's doing quite. I mean, it's only six fights in, and yes, she did beat up a former champion. But yeah, okay, an eighteen-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. But you know, still, that the young Holly, the young lass, was very, very tough. I mean, most of those punches would have knocked out someone else, but she kept going. So yeah, I mean, Beck obviously needs. Um, she's very uh, 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 pushing forward pressure fighter. Mm-hmm. So come forward pressure fighter. Uh, and she just kept, yeah, just kept, um, kept the pressure going on Holly all night. Um, I mean, I'd like to see in the ring how she would go. Is she ready for that next level of competition? Chuck her in the ring and find out. So, who's the top tier girls at one twenty six? Remember, that's the, know, um, that, that's currently. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I can't think of the top of my head, but I do remember that. Wait, let me just go check real quick. It's right here on box. Right. Isn't Amanda Serrano still champion? Yeah, um, her next fight, from my understanding, the one on um, on um, September the twenty fourth, she's going back down to one twenty six. Because remember, um, if you if you don't remember, uh, for those who are watching, they wanted Katie Taylor. The the Katie Taylor fight with Amanda Serrano happened at one thirty five, but um, Jake Paul put out something a few weeks ago that they wanted um, Katie Taylor to come down. You know, because they're saying that Amanda Serrano is a natural one hundred and twenty six pounder, where she is champion. You know, and she's fighting number three by box rec, uh, Sarah uh, Mockfood. That's going to be on um, on uh, on um, September twenty fourth on the undercard of Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker. You have uh, Brenda Cabajal. Um but re- that was the division that um, uh, uh, Shannon Courtney was trying to be at, but she she didn't do well, so she went back down. But yes, as it stands right now, Amanda Serrano is the the queen of that division. Well, there you go. I don't think she's ready for Amanda, but she could probably hang it in there with some. Yeah, but she probably you know, wouldn't, she probably wouldn't Amanda no time, no time soon. But I get what they're doing. You know, they're building her up right now. And um, when I'm looking at her box rec, you know, she debuted professionally back in 2020. So it's looking like 126 is going to be her division, you know, with the possibility of 130 and maybe 135, you know, to end her uh, career. But all right. um, Anybody else on the undercard you want to mention before we uh, move on to the next topic? Uh, no, off the top of my head, but there was a good solid 
card. Uh, there's a young bloke that won the Australian title. I think the featherweight title as well uh, in his second fight, but I cannot remember his name. Um, yep, yeah, uh, I was drifting in and out of the, it drifting in and out. Yeah, but no, it's still, one of those still, cards yeah. like where it's like, all right, you're watching it, but it's like, all right, I'm doing my duty for boxing, but. I got you. I, I get where you're going. I've did it plenty of times. That was good. It, it was good. It was a good car, but you know, um, a bit of a. Uh, it was a showcase you know, car. Not Prospect family, car. So. Yeah, it was good. It was still good. Uh, Very good. All uh, right, got you. So, um, before we get to uh, Breeders versus uh, Opatia, please take your time out, like the videos, and subscribe. And if you're listening on the uh, Fight View 360 Boxing Podcast, please, um, if you're listening on um, Apple, uh, leave a comment and uh, rate the uh podcast we're available on apple um google stitcher amazon alexa spotify uh the links are down below in the description so box oh hold on that's alexa 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 stop okay um <laughs> we're what but we're available on all of your uh listening platforms and um the links to our social media are in the uh, show notes you can follow me at t street controversy and big j at old make big j so the next i guess you can say significant australian boxing uh fight you know even okay. if you know we don't really um consider it to be really like a you know significant fight but still nonetheless you got paul gallon um in a couple of weeks taking on um, two fighters in one night, uh, Justin Hodges and uh, Ben Hannett. That's going to be on September the 15th on main event pay-per-view for $59.95. Uh, we did a little bit of a, um, actually we did a, a very in like detailed, which is available on the, bo- uh, on the podcast, uh, talk about this card. And basically, let's just go ahead and be honest. This is no disrespect to the fighters, but something seems a little bit off about this event. It's almost like a rushed, put-together event um, where you're going to have Paul Gallen fighting two fighters in one night. And the card's going to feature fighters like uh, Harry Garside, uh, Joseph Goodall, Benjamin Hussein, uh, Ty Telford, um, Angel Rustin, the uh, uh, daughter of, um, of uh, Glenn Rustin, the uh, trainer. Or, you know, I guess we're going to say, we're not going to say former trainer, but the trainer... Um, to, you know, equate him to somebody, uh, Jeff Horn. So, what's the new development? And it's looking like uh, Paul Gallen is not happy. Yeah, he's pretty pissed off because no living has not told him what's going on. Who's he's fighting first? How long the round's going to be? Mm-hmm. Um, I sent you the video. Yeah, he's, he's pretty pissed off. And I don't blame him. I mean, yeah, it's hard enough going into one fight, let alone two, and not knowing what's going on. He doesn't know who, who he's going to fight first and or how long the fights are going to be. So he had a big blow up on Fox Sports the other day. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I agree with him. I mean, two weeks out, this 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 sort of bit should have been sorted long before now. I mean, it's two weeks out and they haven't even sorted out the run sheet. I mean, what's going on? Yeah, so, sure, let, me, sure. so let me play this clip from Fox Sports, and I believe this is the one – um, I have it pulled up on the screen here for those who are watching on YouTube, but I'm going to read it out for you. Uh, the headline says, uh, over it, Gal's unlikely ally amid a uh, threat to walk away from historic double fight for ridiculous issue. Let's play this clip. What if there is that big gap in between the two fights, as um, we're hearing potentially there will be with Harry Garside defending his Australian title against Miles Zalewski? That go, might go in the middle of them. Um, how's your body going to yeah, cope with cooling down and warming back up? It's a genuine concern, it really is. And, uh, you know, that's, I can't get an answer off No Limit. I'm, I'm, look, I suppose my frustration with No Limit at the moment is up here and, and my, my hatred and towards these guys is not there at the moment. We'll be on the night, don't worry about it. There'll be genuine hatred and I'll be, I'm going to want to kill them. But... At the moment, it's all about, I don't know what's going on. It's frustrating the hell out of me. And the cool, it's cool right I've tried to trail out the past two weeks. It's hard, man. It's really hard. Like, to go into a fitness session in the morning, have an hour's break, and then walk in the gym and box. Like, I walk in, they dragging me knuckles on the ground. It's hard. So to have to do it on the night, in, in a fight as well, like, it's, I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. And I don't want to do it, but wait and see what happens. And I, I hope no limit... Give me an answer in the next sort of couple of days. What's going on? We, I've got to know what's going on. I really do. I've got to know what's happening. You're going to pull the pin. Well, 
I don't want to pull the pin. I don't want to sit here. These blokes will start giving it to me. I'm saying I'm going to pull the pin, but I mean, you it's, pull the it's, pin. It's, well, mate, it's. <laughs> no, I get it. It is. It, it would it's, be. It's, un, it's unfair. I think it's, we all would like to know. Yeah. It's, it's unfair. Yeah. It's, it's unfair for my behalf when I'm fighting two blokes on the one night, and I still don't know who I'm fighting first, who I'm fighting second, how long the breaks can be. If I'm fighting one one round in, one round out, one after the other, I still don't know what's happening. And that's a, it's a big ask. It's a big thing to do. Mate, this hasn't been done in Australia. It was done on the weekend for the first time, like 130 something yeah. years. I mean, it's, 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 it's a big issue. It's a big thing. And you know what? I'm putting my reputation and what I've built, or what I've done in the last four or five years, I'm putting that on the line. Yeah. I deserve to know what's going on. Sounds yeah. a bit rattled, Paul Gallen. Um, oh, no, don't you start jumping on their side. <laughs> uh, look, I'm not going to feel sorry for him, but no, I get I'm, it. I just never heard him speak it. like this. Yeah, no, well, because he is. It's, it's a massive challenge. Now, you're I'm, mates with him, mate. No, I'm not being mates with him. I, I, like I said, no one... He just like, we all, you to have a cut of you too. <laughs> no, like, we, all, like, we all want to know what's going on. Yeah. And I get that with Gal. Like, at the end of the day, he has to fight two people. We only got, at the end of the day, we've only got to fight one person. That's it. You know, whether it's four rounds, five rounds, six rounds, whatever it is, we all got to fight once apart from him. So I get it. And I get his frustration. So, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to hit him. But I do get his frustration. I know he's a little bit upset and he has every right to be, every right to be because he has done, like I said, he's done wonderful things for the sport. Well, you need to speak to the boys, mate, and get, tell them I need an answer. Yeah, well, and answer by the end of this week. Or... I guess it's made more complicated by the fact that you both want to go first, don't you? Well, the reason why it's best to go first, because, like you say, like, it is harder for him to get up after sparring and going and waiting for a break and then going again to fight someone. So, realistically, if I go last, and if I do happen to knock him out, well, there's going to be always like, oh, well, he's already had a fight, blah, blah, blah. So, I, I, I get nothing out of it. I get no satisfaction out of that. You get no satisfaction out of knocking him out. Well, because he's already had a fight. Like I will get a little bit. Like <laughs> a little he'll, bit. he'll wear my Queensland jersey. If I knock you out, though, you're going to get a hell of a lot of embarrassment. Oh well, that's, that's fine. What you're like, get. Yeah, well, I'm prepared for that. At the end of the day, you're the favourite. You're the one that everyone's thinking is going to Verse blitz two, through. Two, two, yeah, two, one. Everyone still thinks you're going to blitz both of us, and that's, I'm totally fine with it. But like I'm saying, like I'm, it's going to be a tough night for him. But I'm just saying, I, there's a little bit of softness that I've got that I actually feel for him that he has to wait and doesn't know what's going on but that's all it's going to be. And How I'm, old are you boys talking right now? Like on the footy fair, when we play you just do the task that's in front of you, the impossible task. I saw you do it, I've seen you do it. Yeah, I'm just, well, just trying to say something nice now? for each Like realistically, there's one challenge in front of you. One of us will be mate, in front of you. In rugby you take league. us on, if you beat well, us, mate, we're not allowed to take again. each other's head in rugby league, are we? We're punching each other in the freaking head. We don't like have to, you can hit it here if you want. <laughs> mate, look... <laughs> We can't do that in rugby league. And this, it's a different sport. We, like, we, we can't compare what happens on the field to pe- compared to boxing. It's different. So I, I, I don't buy that. I just think that I should know what's going on. I really should. So is there a deadline in place? Well, I think it's going to be the end of this week, surely. I mean, it's only two weeks away. It's mm. got to, they've got to give me something. I mean, they're over in Paris at the moment over there because I helped get them started. So let me know what's going on. Come on, Georgie, Matt, friggin' hell. All right, so I can understand Paul Gallon's frustration. Um, the fight is, this is like, geez, like, man, I was um, doing a live stream um, a couple of days ago, and I was like, damn, it's motherfucking September. You know, we got a Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall. It's September the 3rd right now, for those who are just tuning in. It's September the 3rd right now, and Savannah Marshall taking on Clarissa Shields in, in a huge women's boxing fight next week, along with um, 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 Michaela Mayer and um, Alicia Baumgartner. And then the week after that, it's Canelo versus Golovkin 3. A career match for someone so it's like shit and then paul gallon fights a couple of days before that so it's like damn like you know he does have a point he doesn't you know he is the a side and from my for what i'm from what i'm gathering from it he doesn't have all the details he's like yeah what the fuck is going on like like you know like it's two weeks before the fight and i don't know anything so him being um a media person he knew what he was doing to go on this um um you know to go on live television and be like listen Main event, no limit. Y'all got to tell me what the fuck is going on. You know, because y'all want me to fight two blokes in one night. And I don't have the details on how everything's going to go down. Like, you know, am I going to fight them both back to back? Do I have some cool off time? You know, but um, your thoughts on it? Because already, and we talked about it, um, but it seems like it's really rushed. Yeah, it's it's re- it's really rushed. And it seems that it just hasn't been thought through very well at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think for starters... We don't need these circus acts in Australian boxing anymore anyway. I've said that. This is the last thing Australian boxing needs. We've got, I mean, we've just got another world champion tonight. We don't need 40-year-old football players slapping each other and depriving the front row of so much oxygen they pass it. So, 
because he had a little breathing heavy by round two. So, so yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Last weekend, uh, social media influencer YouTuber KSI, um, mm. fought twice in one night on the zone, which was a nine ninety nine pay per view here in the states. And what they did was they had KSI come out. For, they had him fight to open the card. You know, in his first fight. And then he fought his last fight, the second fight, to end the card. But it seems as though Paul doesn't have any type of, you know, like, he wants, like, direction. Like, like what is it going to be with two weeks away? You know, and for him to be a fighter, you know, and the A-side, he doesn't want to lose to none of these guys. So we talked about it. You know, he's 41 years old. So, you know, um, he doesn't, like, he need like, he needs to stay active. And he doesn't have, he doesn't, he doesn't need time to cool down. That's exactly right, cause, cause if he if he goes out and has the first fight and then has three hours between it, he'll be stuffed by the time the second fight's around. Yeah, he won't be able to. He'll he'll just be cold. Yeah, and that's how injuries and shit happen. <laughs> so we're that age. Yeah, I can't do the same shit I could do 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, for real. So um, yeah, yeah. You know, once you stop, that's that's pretty much. You finish your workout, you're done for the day. That's it. You're not like you're twenty. You can go do something else. You're like, oh. I, and you limp around for the rest of the day. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but I do. So. Well, um, nonetheless, we're going to be here covering the card. Um, I'm actually interested to see how it's going to go, but I'm wondering um, if this is going to be Paul's last fight with main event, or is it going to be his last like card overall? Do you think he's done? Like, what do you think he's going to do? You know, probably wait around uh, and see um, if that Sunny Bill fight's going to come along. Well, I mean, for some reason, I don't think he's going to retire. Like, I think that, you know, if I think personally, I think that he's fulfilling his obligation for a main event, no limit. And then he's going to explore that super fight with us, Sonny Bill, and then retire. Yeah, I think that I think that's the way to go, because as much as I'd entertain the Sonny Bill fight, I mean, with Paul being, you know, 41 and Sonny being a lot younger, bigger and stronger, it, it won't last long. Yeah. So... I think it's one of those things that's better off being uh, the great fight that never was. Okay. That's just my opinion. So you don't think it's going to happen? So, I, I didn't say that. I think it would be better off if it did. Because as I said in many, many uh, the other couple of videos we've had, Australian boxing's got so many legit boxers now. We don't need these circus acts anymore. We don't need these retired football players. They can all piss off into retirement and stay retired. Because they've done their great job, as I said in the last video. Mm. They've done their jobs. They've built up the boxes. The boxes don't need them anymore. So I we've got... Know. Like, my gut, my gut said, feeling is telling me that, like, um, he's waiting for the um, contract, whatever his contract is, you know, for him to be free from main event. And um, my gut is it's going to be, you know, a bidding war for Australian boxing for him versus Sonny Bill, and he's going to take it. Mm. Well, that's if they can agree on the uh, personally, split, because last yeah. I heard, yeah, Sonny Bill wanted 60 and pulled his last knee. Well, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> so, right. yeah, so, he's, yeah, but anyway. Well, on the next well <laughs> for um, Australian boxing fans who are listening, um, I mean, for also the uh, uh, viewers on YouTube, you guys know I'll watch anything. So I'm going to be here covering the card, and uh, we're going to go from there. But um, also... Uh, moving on, um, we got a big fight, a huge fight that just been announced and it just pretty much came out of left field for me. Hold on one minute, Big J. Let me pause for a minute. One minute. All right. Yeah, um, yeah, cause that, like, go ahead. Um, yeah, um, we got another card coming up and what this is going to be on October the 8th. Actually, this is a perfect uh, uh, way to start. You have a massive uh, card regarding how many fights are happening so you can explain this to me now let me just read out the names that are going to be on the card it's on the youtube screen here but for those who are listening on the box boxing podcast um on october the 8th in newcastle you're going to have dennis hogan taking on sam Aikington, and i'm just going to read out the other names that are on the card you're going to have uh sam goodman david light nikita zoo angel rustin returning again um and who else is supposed to be on this card? What I'm seeing is it's a lot of cards, but I'm looking that you have a lot of fighters who are pretty much prospects. So the names that really, really stick out to me are Dennis Hogan, David Light, and Nikita Zoo and Angel Rustin. 
So explain yeah, to me. Now, it's supposed to be a what? A a a ten fight card in how many hours? Or what's going on with this? No, it's a twenty fight card in ten hours on October eighth in Newcastle. They're going to start. I imagine they're going to kick off probably about midday and just go until they're done. So so what's the like? What's the and and it's, and, and once again, it's no limit boxing. Yep, and. I don't know what the motivation is for this because they could easily make two, three cards out of this Correct. in one go. I don't know what. I don't know why they're doing it. I mean, the main reason is they announced a couple of weeks ago on socials that they secured the rights to host the Sam Eglinton versus Dennis Hogan fight for the IBA Super Welterweight title, which I knew was coming. Um, I didn't think that No Limit would would have got it, but they did, so that's good. Um, yeah, obviously in the kid is next fight. He's fighting a young prospect, a super welterweight who's four and whose name I can't remember, but that should uh, be a good fight. Darkin Dryden or Dryden? Oh yeah, Darkin Dryden, yeah. Now that young fellow's four knocked out all of his opponents. Yeah, he's knocked out all of and I mean knocked, I mean out yeah. before I hit the ground. He's level all of them. Him so that on. should be yeah, put him to sleep. And remember Tim uh, sorry, Nikita struggled against Van Horn last fight. I think we Ben Warren and him had, had issues making weight, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we uh, we had um, – everyone thought that Nikita would have knocked his shit out of Ben, and Ben took it to him and yeah. almost knocked him out in that last round. So that 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 zoo fight against the other young fellow is going to be a very, very uh, excellent fight. Should be a good fight. Sam Goodman's back on the fight, uh, back on the card. Uh, he's the he's 122 prospect. Mm-hmm. And David Light, I believe, is a Kiwi light heavyweight, or is he cruiserweight? I know the name. I'm pretty sure he's light heavyweight. Cruiserweight. Cruiserweight. Okay. Yeah, he's a Kiwi um, prospect. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so he, he's. I think his record's what sixteen and one or something. Is that right? Uh, eighteen and zero with eleven KOs. Oh, uh, eighteen and zero. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I'm pretty sure he's he is, Mark uh, and he is ranked. I remember because I've seen him yep. in the rankings multiple times. Yep. So he, he's a Kiwi fighter. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good one of that. Um, who's he taking on? Uh, he's taking on a uh, uh, Vikas Singh. Um, never heard that, of this guy. But basically, nah, we already know, know what this card is. It's a prospect, you know, like build up card. Yeah. Um, this guy, you know, has only fought in Australia. And in uh, India, so nothing of note. Basically, is is it's, you know I'm guessing it's going to be a squash match. Yeah, but basically it's a good prospect card to give these blokes the exposure, and you know just a twenty fight card, which I've never I don't think I've ever seen twenty fights on a card before. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, David Light anyway. is um, currently ranked number twelve by the IBF, and I don't see him in any of the uh, uh, rankings for any of the uh, other sanctions. No, he's uh number twelve by the IBF and number six by the WBO. And guess what? He's um just behind uh Miras Breedis is number five. Yeah, yeah. I've seen his I see I've seen his name before because I think at some point he'll probably cross paths with Jai Patai if he yeah. keeps going the way he's going. Yeah. So he could possibly be I mean they may <laughs> use him to be Jai Patai's comeback fight. You know who knows? Possibly. Who knows? Um, possibly. But, all right, um, so we're going to pay attention to that card. We're not going to, you know, guarantee that we're going to provide coverage. But, hey, you know, we, you know, with, I mean, meaning uh, fight night coverage. But, hey, we still will be uh, covering it. But also, um, for those who are listening in, uh, take a time out, like the video and subscribe. And if you're listening on a uh, podcast, please leave a review and a um, and uh, a rating. And if you go check out our Fight View 360 Boxing Podcast or... Um, our YouTube channel, you'll see that the boxing, the Australian boxing topics that we're not talking about in this video, we've talked about in other videos. So, all right, uh, two more topics um, since we're uh, short on time. What's going on with uh, Shannon O'Connell and uh, Ebony Bridges? That fight is at first bid, and I believe it's uh, going to be open until September 14th. That's all the details I know. Okay. So, so it looks like it's happening. Yeah. Either it has to, um, the three scenarios with that is um, Ebony drops her title. Ebony fights Shannon, or um, what was the other one? What was the third? Um, um, the they already the IBF already said that they you know wasn't going to allow anyone to fight anyone else. So either you know Ebony drops her title, or she fights Shannon. There's no. That's pretty much that's pretty much the options at this stage. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, 
that fight probably won't happen until December at November. least. Yeah. At least. I mean, it depends if who wins the first bit. Bob, yeah, it depends who wins. If Bob picks it up, which I doubt it, or I doubt that will happen. Um, because you know they're looking at other title fights um, on that card. Um, Henny can both those yeah, too. I, yeah, Henny can both those too. Um, I doubt that'll happen, but yeah, uh, it probably won't happen until November at this stage. I mean, I know the IBF wanted it done by September 14th. I'm like, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. So I always thought that was pushing shit uphill. Um, but yeah, I, I dare say that'll probably happen November, late October, early November. Mm-hmm. Um, I, main event will throw their hat, uh, no limit will throw their hat into the ring for sure um, to secure it. But hopefully... <laughs> Because uh, there's no card announced for November at the moment, uh, they can throw it in November, and it could be uh, a tight headline. Card. Okay, we still have time for a November fight. We still have time for it to happen in November. Well, yeah, we do in Australia because there's there's no other cards going on. But the moment, yeah, um, so. there's still time. Like if something gets done in the next couple of weeks, you know, um, they'll still have time to get an eight week camp in, you know, promote mm. the fight, you know. So if it wasn't happening in November, I'm guessing we would hear something in the next few weeks or so. Um, but now, yeah, but we just sure. don't know. Uh, what the location is, what network it's going to be globally and in Australia. So, and that's the point of a purse bid. We don't know anything right now. We don't know where it's going to end up. And um, we've, we've talked about multiple times that we don't feel that Ebony and her team want the fight. Nah, nah. Nah, it's pretty, pretty obvious that uh, nah, she doesn't want it to happen here. Well, and if, well and she if doesn't Ebony, want it to happen here. And if Ebony drops the belt, it's going to be a really, really bad look. That that's a clear duck, and I and and one thing about uh, my content, um, for the viewers, I never say ducking. You know, like I mean, I'm not gonna say never, but it's rare. But if she drops that belt, it's gonna be a clear duck. Mm. It's gonna I be. I believe a, she will duck. Yeah, I don't. I don't I think don't so. She'll duck I don't think so, because they I know it would be a duck. It, it it wouldn't help her promotionally. Mm. You know, just chuck her in there and see how well she does. And if she wins, you know what what happens if she wins? Like, how is she gonna be viewed? I mean, well, Ebony. she'll gain a hell of a lot of respect. Yeah. She beats Shannon. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that means there's only one hurdle left, Susie. Yeah. So, like, if she was the so, pull, that, if Ebony was the pull that off, she would gain a lot of respect. Yeah. A lot of respect. Yeah. If she beats Shannon, I mean, she's already the number one boxer in Australia, where people want to admit it or not, she's the you know, yeah. She's the IBF champion. She defeated the champion. She didn't win a vacant belt. So whether people like it or not, she's at the top of the moment. But you know, there's definitely three top other females like, as far as marketability and definitely. Yeah, well, the, well, she's she's top she's top female because she's the most legit champ. Yeah. So I mean, you know, whether people like that or not, it's irrelevant. It's just that's just the facts. Yeah, you know, if she beats Shannon, she she's definitely at the top. The only hurdle left is Sue. Well, she can fight Shanika or Susie, mm-hmm. either of them. So. Yeah, you know, there's still two or three, uh, two or three other females out there that she can fight just from Australia alone. And then, of course, there's all the other champions. Um, but yeah, but you know, if she beats Shannon, she's definitely you know um, solidified herself. That's for sure. All but right. I don't think she will. I mean, I don't think she'll beat Shannon. <laughs> all right. So, um, final topic. Um, and when I got this news, um, I was sitting here at the computer. And a tweet came out, and I forgot the, uh, it was called um, uh, Batman Boxing. So shout out to him. Um, he's a uh, viewer of the channel. But also, um, he does, um, I, don't know if, I don't know if he's from Australia, but basically he keeps up with all the uh, Australian boxing news. And when no, I saw, I don't think he is. Oh, he's not? Okay. But when I saw this was announced, um, and then uh, Ben Damon of uh, Fox uh, Sports Australia and uh, main event uh, pay-per-view uh, broadcasters, a uh, broadcaster in um, Australia, and I have it pulled up here on the screen. It says, three-time world champion Miras Breedis has verbally agreed to fight Justice Hooney at heavyweight on Saturday, October the 29th in Brisbane. Now, before, even if I wasn't covering Australian boxing like I am today with Big J, still, I would have looked at this like, whoa. So this is one of those fights where I can say, you know, because it's in, in, in October, it hasn't really hit yet. But this is a big sleeper fight. Like this is a big, this is, you know, like this is going to gain some global appeal. 
you know, maybe not now because, you know, it hasn't really processed yet for a lot of um, um, American media. But just as soon back in July, uh, lost a very um, uh, tough fight against um, uh, Jai Opataya, where I feel that he didn't take Opataya seriously. Yeah, now, Opataya is good. He's good. Don't get don't get it twisted. Dude, from what I've seen from him, you know, watching like the movement, you know, he did fade late, get his mandible damn near taken off, meaning um he had his jaw broken in two places. But that was arguably one of the biggest upsets. If not, I, I'm, you know, and, and right now we're doing this podcast live and in real time. So, but off the top of my head, that could possibly be the biggest upset of the year. Would you think? It's at least top three. Oh, shit. Yeah, that'd be biggest win of the year. Easy. I'm talking about overall boxing. Easy. Like, not just Australian boxing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's up there. If not number one, because no one paid attention to that fight until it was over. Of course, we did. You know, but until it was over, it was like, oh, shit, Mavis Breed is lost. Dang. You know, and Mavis Breed has started coming on late. But now he's officially moving to heavyweight. Now, he's been flirting with heavyweight and he fought at heavyweight um, um, at his first stint against Mahmoud Char back in 2015. And I, and by the way, Mahmoud Char just uh, yesterday uh, called out Tyson Fury. He's been a long time WBA heavyweight. He was a champion, one of the underling belts. But the point I'm trying to make is. Breedis has been flirting with heavyweight now. Like, okay, you know what? It's about time I start making my run at heavyweight for the last couple of years or so. And he did um, officially announce he was moving to heavyweight, but then went back down to cruiserweight to defend his title. But now with this Justice Hooney fight, there's so much to talk about here because I'm wondering, you know, since he lost to Opataya, does he feel like, okay, you know what? I got to beat one of their guys now, but this time I'm going to go to heavyweight to do it. And I have to really, really go back and research. Now, I've seen both of these guys, guys fight multiple times, but I'm not comfortable giving a prediction yet. How do you feel about it? I mean, I'm loving the fight. You know, we're going to be here. We're going to be, you know, covering the press conferences. We're going to be covering the fight on fight night. Um, I won't be surprised um, because of the, the significance that here in the States, we'll get a um, maybe possibly ESPN or another um, broadcaster to be able to watch it here in the States because it does have significance around it. Oh, shit, yeah. I mean, when I first thought, thought this, my initial uh, first thought was, what, does Breas want another ass kicking, does he? So, but... Um, you think Hooting and I mean, Beanie? I said that. Mm, oh, well, that was my initial thought. After you sit down for a minute and, you know, the gears start churning and you process the actual information in your head, that's a pretty stupid fucking statement. But, um... Uh, can Hooney beat him? Well, yeah, because he's a bigger, younger man and he'll have mm. at least, what, 30, 40 pounds on him because Hooney weighs in about 240. Breedis' last fight was 200. So the, highest he's been, like Breedis, the highest he's been is uh, 213, and that was that last heavyweight fight against Mark Muchar. Okay, well, he's got at least, he's got almost 30 pounds on him. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to have a couple of inches in height, and he's a young fella. And Hooney is like a uh, lightweight for hand speed. He doesn't have the power, but bloody hell, he's quick. So, by the way, so, um, Justice um, Hooney is a uh, six and zero with four KOs, twenty three years old, listed at us uh, at a uh, six foot four. Uh, Mirrors Breed is twenty eight and two with twenty KOs, thirty seven years old, um, six foot one. He's listed at. Yeah, so basically, Hooney's going to take on an older, small man. It's one of those situations where it's a no win situation. If he wins, he beats up an older, not at his best, blown up cruiserweight. And if he loses, he like lost to an older, not Correct. Yeah, blown up cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. So Hooney's in a no win situation. So. Yeah, I didn't know. really think about that because he's not going to get no stripes if he wins. You know, he'll, he'll have to scalp. Not really. He'll have to scalp, like, okay, I got the breeder's name on my resume. But this is a mm. breeder's who has just lost to Opataya, a cruiserweight. So it's not like he had a couple of wins under his belt at heavyweight, mm. you know? Exactly. He's, like, he's coming off his, he's coming off his, uh, another loss, uh, and a huge upset loss. But then again, that's going to make Breeders extremely pissed off and he's going to be gunning for Hooney. Yeah, for real. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's a 50, 50 fight. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to have a lot of publicity. You know, another great thing for Australian boxing. But, you know, once you break it down, you're like, oof. Yeah. Um, 
not 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 uh, sort of like a no win situation for Paul Tooney, and that's yeah. I'm surprised he actually agreed to the fight because yeah. in the rankings of heavyweight, it doesn't do him any favors. That's the other thing I could like. Why do you agree to this? That's not going to do him any favors at heavyweight. Yeah. <laughs> So, and right now, I'm looking, anyway, Tony be... isn't ranked anywhere at heavyweight. But don't be surprised uh, before the fight happens if don't be surprised if Hooney and uh, Breedis are going to be ranked. You know, before the fight, uh, he's not top fifteen, even though he won the, uh, like three or four regional belts against. Um, but then I could have Joseph... sworn that Hooney was there some at, at one point. He took him out. I could have sworn he was. I don't remember. I think he was about fifteen in WBC, but they, he lost just as quick. Yeah. So, because I think because I saw I saw the rankings in the top twenty. He's in the top twenty, but he's not in the top fifteen. So I think he's about seventeen with WBC and around the same or eighteen of IBS. Got you. Because he won. What was his? How many belts he win last fight? It was like three or some shit. Yeah. Uh, the IBF, uh, Pan Pacific, the Oriental. Um, basically that's not WBO. Yeah, and the WBO. So, so those are basically that IBF and that WBO or that IBF Pan Pacific and that WBO Oriental. That's basically like one underling belt before you get a ranking. I believe it's one of the international belts you have to get IBF or WBO to be like in like the top uh, fifteen. WBO Global gets you a um, ranking because that's the one Tim Zhu won, um, and IBF it's. International, not Pan Pacific. Yeah, Pan Pacific was a tear down. Yeah, it's one tier and down. WBC, WBC, ah, oh shit. What's it in the WBC? Oh, WBC's I got like 10 fucking belts. Yeah. They got silver, interim. What else? Oh, they got 10 bloody belts going on. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, he's on the cusp of a ranking, and don't be surprised if he does beat um, uh, Breedis. He does get a ranking. But um, how do you like to fight, though? You know, because oh, over, I'm talking about like, be... like, what's the what's the appeal you think is going to be in in Australia for the fight? Oh well, uh, basically, Hooney would want to see people people want to see Hooney crack Brutus out. People go run for it. I'm like, shit, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he loses the opportunity there. Hooney gets to go because you know, there's, Hooney's got a lot of support. Um, you know, despite the um, Olympic fuck up. Um, People still jump behind him, and it's another, you know, another solid, credible name coming to Australia. So, yeah, yeah pe- people will, people will watch this. I mean, if we're going to pay sixty bucks to watch Paul Gallon, you know, piss fart around with two footy players, they'll gladly pay sixty bucks to watch a legitimate fighter. So, mm-hmm. and you can't get more legit than Metis Press. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, it, it sells itself. It sells well, itself. Of course, uh, this is going to definitely be a pay per view. I don't think that you know, even though it hasn't been officially, fully officially announced, but of course, this is going to be a pay per view. Oh, of course it would, because that's. I think that's pretty much. Um, Hooney's last fight was sixty bucks pay per view. Yeah. Remember, undisputed, undefeated. So if they yeah. charge sixty bucks like for that, they'll certainly charge sixty Before that, for this. Um, the fight against uh, Paul Gallen. Yep. Uh, Kristen Soy. Uh, Jack Is that I don't. I don't know. I, don't think, no, I, th- I think the soy. Remember, um, I know the soy fight. That was that. Uh, that Fox card. You watched that. That wasn't a pay per view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't. No. But uh, I guarantee, Justice Tony, all these fights will be main event pay per view mm-hmm. now. I guarantee. All right. Well, so. um, we're going to be here covering this fight. Um, I'm really interested in this fight. Um, I have to sit back and process before I give a prediction. Um, and as uh, Big J pointed out, yes, uh, Miris Breedis has something to prove. So he's going to come out like a bat out of hell. Um, Justice Hooney does have that size, and he does have the hand speed of a lightweight. Like, he's a very, very fast uh, fighter. And he can be someone can st- – he's not a pressure fighter, power puncher, the best way to put it. He is someone of a technician. You know, but it's going to be, it's gonna, it's gonna be a huge uh, step up in experience. You know, Breedis is experienced. And what we saw against uh, Opataya is – you know, he started coming on late. So even though he's going to be significantly smaller, you know, a uh, three-inch height advantage, you know, and at least it's probably going to be, for example, um, a lot of people felt that Usyk, when he fought Anthony Joshua, that he was too small. He came in at 221, he's, and uh, Joshua for the last fight came in at 244. So Usyk for both Joshua fights came in at the exact same weight, 221, uh, give or take a quarter of a pound or so. And Joshua for the first fight came in at 240, for the second fight came in at 244. But um, Usyk beat Breedis 
And Usyk is overall a better mover than Breedis. So I'm wondering, you know, that's where I got to really process the fight on how it may go. Because in my gut, in my gut, I think that Hooney can pull it off. All right, I agree. You know, but Breedis with that experience, you know, and if he doesn't get too overzealous, and we've, and we've talked about multiple times and, you know, about the, the hand issues of Hooney, you know, he may, you know, be feather-fisted for a heavyweight. And I don't think that's going to go good for him um, um, if they like when they do fight. So right now, I'm saying 50-50, but my gut, if I was to give the edge, I'm going to give it to Hooney because of the age of Breedis and the size. But will Hooney use his size? Remember when um, um, Usyk is a way is a better boxer than Miras Breedis. Breedis is a he's a good boxer, but he is if we just to keep it simple, a pressure fighter, power punching type of fighter. So it's going to be different than Usyk Joshua, you know, because Joshua was out there trying to box Usyk to where I feel that Hooney, he should try to box Breedis. You kind of get where I'm going with this? You know, like, you know, he should try to box his ears off to where, you know, Joshua couldn't do it. I don't know. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm edging towards Hooney. I agree. I agree. Because it's just because, you know, he's a younger man. He's a lot bigger. He's going to be a lot heavier and he's a lot fucking faster. And, so, you know, he should, you know, he should. I mean, I, let's be honest. I'm sure he's probably watched the He's watched the Usyk Joshua fight. And I'm sure don't be surprised. Do not be surprised if main event, you're going to start seeing parallels of promotion. You know, whether all she's talking about, well, you know, Joshua Ford Usyk, is this the same thing? And what things that you're going to do that Joshua didn't do? I don't be surprised. I think they're going to do that. I think they're going to try to sell this fight off of um, um, Usyk Joshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there is some parallels yeah. there. It's very similar. I mean, what, you know, same height, same weight, well, virtually same height, same weight. Yeah, pretty much. So it's Usyk and Breedis aren't very, aren't, aren't different, aren't that much different. Mm -hmm. So same height, same weight. That's about right, isn't it? The same height, yeah. same weight. Um, yeah, Did well, um, yeah. Um, Usyk and, um, actually, no, Usyk is a, a six foot three. Um, Hooney is six foot oh, four. Okay. Joshua is cool. six foot six. Uh, and, um, uh, Breedis is six foot one. Now I've met well, Usyk in person, same. like Usyk, you know, and I'm six foot two and a half. Like Usyk, like he's 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 got the height. He's definitely got the height. Mm. Yeah, but they'll, they'll be the same. They'll be the same height advantage. It'll be about three inches to correct. The back yeah, correct. And what about the reach? What about the reach? Surely hooney has got to have four inches on him. Um, they don't list it on a box rack, unfortunately. But Breedis is yeah, listed okay. at a uh, seventy-five uh, inch reach. Reach. Oh yeah, Hooney be closer to eighty. Yeah, he's got long bloody arms. Yeah. So, all right. Um, closing thoughts. No, oh, no, just looking forward to it all. You know, uh, as usual, you know, Australian boxing is on fire at the moment. As I said, twenty twenty two just continues to be the year that just keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've got another world champion. Congrats to Bear Corker. Um, what else do I need to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the blokes in Australia. Yes, it's just gone past midnight, so it's officially Sunday, so it's a Father's Day. Uh, all you Aussie blokes, make sure you ring your old man, tell him you love him. Uh, that's about it. That's all I've got. Enjoy all your right, day. Um, oh, damn. I had a final question. I forgot what it was. Oh, 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 oh I remember what it was. Um, so we got, we, got the, we, got the, oh, we got the main event. Um, um, we got the pay-per-view. For September, which is Paul Gallen, the pay per view for October is is going to be Hooney uh, Breedis. What what's the pay per view? Did we talk about it? what's December? You know they're going to have one. What's December's? Who do you think? We and we know that January is going to be Zoo. What's December's? You think they're going to take off? Probably, they're, going to, they're going to throw something out there. Probably Zarafa versus uh, Old Mate. Falco. Gotcha. Uh, okay, Falco for the uh, okay. All right. Well, you know, well, main events already got three pay per views in next month. Yeah, but you know they're gonna they have got, one for uh, December though. They got they're gonna have one for December at least. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, because they'll probably have one for November as well. Okay. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, who? Yeah, because what they've got um, the Newcastle one, then uh, Haney can okay, base two, then Breeders Hooney, then they'll probably have Shannon Ebony in there. And then I'll have something in December before Charlo and Zoo is on the 28th of January next year. So, yeah, there's at least another four or five pay-per-views coming for the end of the year. Easy. 
Easy. All right. Um, well, uh, take your time out, like the video and subscribe. And if you're listening to us on the uh, podcast, please leave a review and a uh, rating. We're available on all of your uh, podcast listening platforms. Even if you on, on Amazon, Audible, you know, we're on every podcasting listening platform. And I've took a lot of time to make sure that we're there for you to listen to us wherever you feel comfortable, even if it is on YouTube. Uh, follow me at uh, T Street Controversy on uh, Twitter and Big J at Old Mate Big J. You spell it all out, but it's in one word. Um, and yeah, we'll see you for the next episode. Thanks for listening in and uh, thank you for watching. And please subscribe. Leave a like before you go. I'm going to let this uh, subscribe um, screen up here for a minute. Uh, for those who are watching on YouTube and uh, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.